Intel fanboys, what are you guys gonna make fun of now? So you guys are looking at the uh, AMD Ryzen right here. Now we're gonna do a bit of a different video here. A lot of people are gonna be talking uh, for 30, 40 minutes on this, this new architecture. You guys can go watch those. We're gonna put this thing head to head with the 7700K, talk about gaming, talk about productivity, and really figure out where this fits into the market. I'll go ahead and get it out of the way. We'll go ahead and get some puns here. Uh, yeah, it's rising to the top. Reginald, there's something rising in my pantaloons. This versus X99, it's sort of a game changer because it's about half the price and it's more performant than a lot of the different tests out there. Um, we're not gonna really get deep into that. Just know that, uh, you know, if you like if you like a lot of cores, if you're doing some prosumer stuff, some uh, productivity stuff, just look right here because you're gonna save a lot of money, uh, be able to get, you know, a bigger graphics card if you've got a certain budget you're going to be able to do an absurd amount with ryzen now as far as uh, power goes it's also you know better than most out there in fact at idle it's getting the same thing as the 7700k which is cabby lake four cords eight threads you got eight cores 16 threads right here and the power is very similar that's pretty phenomenal when you look at you know where, where they came from bulldozer to this we've got some fat cores and we've got true you know multi-thread action going on here so now these cores uh the way they work is a little different and the cache on this the cache speed is so fast they've got some so fast you wouldn't believe how fast this cache is but seriously they've sped up the operations of the cpu and the cache is benchmarking faster than any of the intel stuff we have here in the office so that's also um something to call all your friends about now this is priced higher than the 7700K. So if you're just going for straight gaming, we'll look at some benchmarks and think about that. But here's what I want you guys to think about um, when you look at all this stuff. Yeah, there's lots of new specs, lots of new things to learn. The platform is cool. You've got U.2, all the latest stuff, you know, uh, Gen 3x4, M.2 support. We've got USB 3, 3.1, uh, all the latest generations. So you've got all the bells and whistles that you'd come to spec expect from modern platforms finally on AMD. AM4 Plus is also going to be future uh, feature proof until DDR5 comes around then they'll need a new socket but you're going to see you know APUs on this you're going to see uh, different cores four cores six cores so lots of different stuff to be excited about there but what we currently have here uh, with the A core parts we've got the you know the $500 1800X which we're playing with right here um, overclockability is okay but not ridiculous uh, we were you know, we were getting 4.2, 4. maybe you can get 4.3, but in order to do that, it had to go way higher than 4.25 uh, volts. And um, if you're gonna be doing that, you're gonna shorten the life of your CPU. So we, we were doing most of these tests at stock um, just to see how the IPC is at stock with this one and the, and the uh, 7700K. Anyway, back to the overall big picture here. So completely disrupting Intel's X99 market. Yes, that is done. That's what's happening. Also, this is really attractive for people who are developing games. We're probably gonna use some of these processors in our game development because um, one of the things I wanted to do was get you know more cores for the game development because Unreal Engine, when it's rendering and stuff, it'll use up all those cores. But when you're actually playing the game, it needs the frequency. So in order to get a Xeon that's fast enough and has a lot of cores, we're gonna spend thousands and thousands of dollars or enter a Ryzen. Here we've got something that has a, you know pretty good frequency and also plenty of cores, plenty of, plenty of threads, Perfect for game development environments. Um, productivity, I mean, you can look at the setting bench scores and that sort of thing. We'll, we'll check out with Josh in just a second for some of the uh, some of the hardcore benchmarks. But just, you know, in general productivity, you know, Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, and that sort of thing, it's gonna be really nice on this. Um, but a lot of those programs are not really good for hyper-threading, so whatever. They don't really like a lot of cores, but in the future, I'm sure they will. A lot of other programs like Blender and stuff, uh, Maya, 3D Studio Max, really, really nice platform for that so if you're someone who wants to game and do productivity just start looking at ryzen right now the other thing that's interesting about this if you're just straight up gaming it's probably not the fastest thing for the money right now with this part we'll have to see what comes out with some of their other parts but you're going to get more performance out of a 6700k cabby lake or a 7700k cabby lake but it's so slight that it almost doesn't matter and the other thing that's interesting about this is the the frame times are extremely smooth with the cpu so they've done a really good job. I mean, everything's just tightened right up. One other thing, XMP on these platforms is not officially supported because, you know, 
Intel's got XMP and they, you know, they won't give it to AMD. However, out of the box, most of these motherboards just support it or you can do it manually in the uh, UEFI. So I'm not concerned with that at all. All right, the last use case scenario I wanna to talk to you guys about is streaming because there's a lot of people out there um, who sometimes build a separate PC and streaming is crazy. Everyone these days wants to stream and they want a lot of performance. Well, four cores, the four threads or four cores, eight threads, you know, like you get with the i7 and the i5, uh, Cabby Lake stuff, Brywell stuff, Haswell stuff, whatever. It's okay, but you do get a bit of a performance hit. We made a video a long time ago that got a lot of flack talking about AMD's uh, eight cores, the ch you know, the really cheap bulldozer parts and how they were pretty good for streaming uh, and for, you know, dollars, you know, when you, when you look at the price performance, really, really, really good. Well, here it's the next level. You're not gonna have to build a new streaming rig uh, you'll be able to just use this, get your performance. I mean, a lot of that stuff can be done GPU bound these days with even with Intel, you can throw it on a separate GPU, but um, you really don't need a separate PC to stream anymore if you're looking at something like this or doing it GPU bound. Uh, but you know, the, the X64 uh, encoding on this is awesome. All right, let's head over and uh, check out what Josh is doing over there on the test bench with those benchmarks. Talking about our test bench, why is the 980 on there? I'm having some trouble with the, the setup, you're just tired of pulling them on and off, is that what's going on? Yeah, I put the 980 on because it goes on easy. The 1080 HOF has that big button that gets in the way, so. Just to make sure it works. So we're having some some issues right now with this machine. Well, we'll not show that, but it's, it's having issues with socket pressure, right? Yes. Yeah, and that CPU water block is, is wrenched down to the point where that board is uncomfortably flexed still requires some elbow grease to get it started. Starting with CPU-Z Bench. It's an easy one, everybody can do it at home. You just boot it up, hit the bench tab, start it, good to go. We did this against the 7700K, single thread for the 7700K is 2266, multi is 9804. With our Ryzen test, 2292 single thread and 18822 for multi. Wow! I mean, this is the only test where the single thread was higher than the 7700K, but that multi-thread, holy crap. Yeah, it's more like X99 stuff right there. That, yeah, that's X99 and above. Yeah, extreme stuff. Cinebench, this is the one that everybody wants, and this is the one that AMD themselves showed. 7700K is at 192 single, 970 multi, and thus R7 1800X is at 162 single, which is the number that AMD showed, and then 1639 for the multi, which is not the number AMD showed. We actually got a little bit higher on our multi-thread there. We have uh, seven zip next, which is our single thread for the 7700 is 3669, multi-thread 27,411. For our R7 1800X, we got a 2640, a little bit lower, not too much lower, but a little bit lower on the single thread, but 40,000. 40,000, 34 points for the multi-thread. It's, it's a beast. It really is, it's insane. Passmark 9, again, another benchmark you can download right away and just get it running, it takes five minutes. Um, 7700K single thread was uh, 2624. Our CPU total was 12,400, which is pretty respectable. Picked a couple of these tests here. There's like eight or nine tests that run. We just grabbed single thread for floating point and physics, because those ones are the big contenders that Ryzen is sitting up against. So our floating point for the 7700K, 8827, physics 686. And then for the R7 1800X, we have 15,872 for the CPU total. Our single thread is 2151, which is again, not that far behind, still behind the 7700K, but not far. Our floating point is 16,113, which is almost double the 7700K. And Makes then the, sense. Yeah, it's, it, hey, eight cores versus four. Yeah. And then the physics is 741. Now that's a single thread benchmark. I think that it's using the extra cache, but it is a single thread benchmark and it is beating the 7700K. Yeah, the cache is an interesting story on this. It is, actually we do have cache benchmarks. Let's go down to that next. The cache on the 7700K, you know, Intel is the king of SRAM. Their L2 and L3 cache both reported slower speeds than the Ryzen chip. And that's pretty significant there. That's a pretty good jump. It's, it's, it's a huge a jump. jump. That's a big jump. That's like 30% on some of these tests. It's huge. I mean, even like L3 cache copy speeds, insane difference. Wow. Almost two times. All right, so that was the uh, productivity um, section of things. Now we're going to look at gaming 
And I want you to know that the frequency really matters for a lot of games. A lot of games don't work with eight cores, 16 threads. They're made for three cores, four cores, or whatever. So frequency is gonna matter a lot. But AMD really is highlighting the fact that their frame times are under control right now, and they're, they're, they're producing a very smooth gameplay experience. Nonetheless, um, it's very similar in gameplay. Let's go over and take a look at our scores with Josh. All right, Witcher 3, 4K Ultra and 1080p, flat across the board. We got frame times from AMD were really impressive, matching with Intel's offering. All right, in Arma 3, frame rate on 4K Ultra is a little bit funky. The frame rate's dipping down to zero in some cases, but we do have a pretty clear lead on the 7700K on Ultra 4K and a 1080p. They're pretty close to the same, but the 7700K is gonna give 60 FPS on the board. And with Shadow of Mordor, equal. Almost across the board, equal. I mean, we got a little bit of frame time difference on the AMD system, but not enough to really matter. We did get more FPS on the max for 4K Ultra. So Shadow of Mordor really likes the extra cores. So we can do some more benchmarks. Um, we don't actually have a 6900K in office. I've got a 5960X at my uh, computer, so we can put it up against that. But we will do some future videos, and we're going to overclock this a little bit. Right now, we didn't really do many overclocked uh, benchmarks. Uh, we tried some SLI. I do wish there were more PCI Express lanes. So we only have 24 lanes. That's the one thing that I think people are gonna like look at and be like, eh, Max 99 stuff, you know, you can PLX this, that works, but there could be a little latency in there. So scratch your head a little bit. At the end of the day, AMD's back, guys. Go out there and buy their stock or whatever you wanna do. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't recommend that actually, but you know, AMD is back. Um, I just wish that the frequency was a little bit higher. I wish we could push it farther than 4.2 here in the office, but it's a huge step in the right direction. And uh, X99 stuff is is pretty much dethroned. I mean, you're not you're not gonna have to go out and spend a thousand bucks for a, you know an eight core CPU anymore. You don't have to do that. You can do it right here for half the price. And also, once you get the new you know the other parts coming out, 1700X and, and and that sort of thing, those are pretty much the same CPU, just different prices. They're bend, of course. These are you know made to to clock higher, but everything's unlocked. It's a nice new world. And uh, AMD, welcome back to the party. It's really nice to have you around. So let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, we'll get nerdier in some future videos, do some overclocking, like I said, do some more tests, some whatever you guys, just I wanna see what direction you guys want us to go in uh, here with this, but um, yeah. We also need to swap out this motherboard. This motherboard's been abused a little bit, as you can see in our in our vlog footage or whatever. All right, so we see you guys in the comments. And oh, check out some shirts. This one's nice. Do you have it yet? You should get it. Or else I'll give you a Dutch rub. Not a pleasant one, neither. One of them ones that leaves you hurting for days. Don't believe me, I'll do it. While you're at the car wash, in your car with your doors locked, you look over and I'll be right there ready for you. Give you the worst Dutch rub of your life. You won't want to get out neither because there'll be one of them things right by your door, one of them whirly gigs with the soap all over and over it and whatnot. You can't escape, don't even try, so you better subscribe. I love you. All right, bye.